Hi YouTube. <clears throat> Clandestine Pipe here. Just enjoying a beautiful night. Having a lot of fun. Mmm. I'm smoking my Peterson, what do you call that? A bent bulldog? Something like that? I, uh, I love this shape. Um, I wouldn't call it one of my best smokers. It's a good smoker, but <clears throat> I tend to get more gurkle than average. So as long as I have my trusty pipe cleaners around, it's a really nice experience. But I don't know if that's owing to the pipe or what I smoke in it, but what. Mm. And in it, I am smoking a little delicious Star of the East by Cornell and Deal. Now, what I love about Star of the East by Cornell and Deal, amongst many other things, it reminds me of an old blend, a bulky that I could get at uh, Edwards. You might still be able to get it at Edwards in Denver, but I don't make, make it down there very often. Of which they called Balkan Supreme. And what it had in common was that it was 50% Latakia, which is a lot, right? That's a lot of Latakia. Mmm, and a tasty lot of Latakia. And I do like that Latakia taste. But what's weird about both these blends is it doesn't taste to me like as much of a lat bomb as some of the others. So even though it's got a very high, or the, the recipe says it has a lot of Latakia. I don't know whether having that much Latakia together kind of cancels it out, or if it just, but, or tempers it, or what, but, mmm, it's smoky and full, like, full, full, full of flavor, it's cool, oh, shit. oh it's just bizarre to me that you don't taste as much, or I don't taste, sorry, as much of it as I do, so it's just not as Latakia forward. It's just a very full, satisfying blend. I've never had this in its flake form, although I'd love to, and probably will one day, just because I love everything Cornell does with the crumble cakes and, and such. I had a, a tin of Briar Fox, and I, I couldn't couldn't get through that. Uh, I'm sorry, I could, not, not couldn't get through that. I couldn't stop smoking it. It went so fast. It was gone. And it was gone by the time I'd snapped. Mmm. Well, this one. Mm, this is great. This is a fantastic and delicious, delicious blend. Mmm. Along with Old Tartan. Those two have been my big smokers for the last few weeks. Along with, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there of uh, my classic Prince Albert and the like. Mmm. So full. Someone on Tobacco Reviews years ago about the Balkan Spree and that other one uh, that this feels like to me said after a bowl of this I feel full like I've just had Thanksgiving dinner and that's really what it is. It is such a satisfying blend for me. Again, if you're if you're not a lot of Kia fan, I don't think you'd care for it. Mmm. All right. Yeah, it's it's just right across the plate. I wound up wind up after a bowl feeling just satisfied, full. And my favorite thing, and I don't know if you guys get this, if everyone gets this, or if this is just weird to my tastes, but I find. When I smoke a lot of Kia blends, you know, brush my teeth, go to bed, have a meal, have a cup of coffee, brush my teeth the next day, and then I'll be halfway through the next day and have this like ghost lot of Kia flavor just seep in through. And I don't know whether I'm just not brushing my teeth thoroughly <laughs> or if three meals isn't enough, but it's this beautiful moment where you get to taste all that woodsy uh, kind of campfire-y lot of Kia taste on the tip of your tongue. I don't know why that is. It makes me want to always smoke a lot of Kia blends. Which, of course, I don't. I appreciate all. A great number of blends, but... Mm, mm, mm. That lot of Kia ghost flavor is a, is a second part. I love the lot of Kia flavor to begin with. But 
flavor to begin with, but once you add that ghost, that little reminder, like, oh yeah, that's still there. Oh yeah, pipe smoke still exists in the world, even though I can't usually have a pipe in the middle of the day. Save for my days off. Mmm. I'm about halfway into this bowl, give or take. I was watching Aristocod, one of Aristocod's videos. I think it might have been a recent one. Well, maybe not. But anyway, he's talking about pipe smoking tips. And one of the things he said is you probably won't need the tamp as often nor as hard as you might think. And that just busted me. It's interesting. I always, I do tend to smoke uh, or uh, tamp more often than I think I need to. And I tend to push just a little bit harder than I need to. I mean, the weight of the tamper is enough. And it really, especially with premium blends, affects my the burn and makes more for more relights for me. So since I saw that, a couple, it was a week, two weeks, whatever it was, I've been trying to tamp less frequently and uh, less heavily. But it gave me an interesting picture or idea or thought huh, that once talked to a cigar smoker, and he said why he wouldn't smoke cigars, and he said it was or pipes, he said it was too fidgety. So are we too fidgety?